Doctor, a couple of questions, I guess, first. How do you actually find this? You, you take what was working with SARS and you altered it some. How does, what's that process? So the brief version is we went back and found these antibodies that block the SARS virus. They block those spikes and they would protect animals like a mouse. If you gave it those antibodies, the, the mouse, and you exposed it to SARS, the, the mouse wouldn't get sick. These are great, except they're against SARS. But SARS and the novel coronavirus aren't that different from each other. And so what we did is we took those antibodies and we have a way in our laboratory of making hundreds of millions of mutations on those antibodies. So we searched all the possible ways we could mutate it to adapt it to recognize the novel coronavirus. And because we already know these things are protective of animals, uh, and we, now we hit the same spot on the novel coronavirus, we're pretty confident these things are gonna be ultra potent against uh, um, COVID-19. So you, and I'm not saying that it's available yet, but in the lab, you actually already have an antibody that is a good fit. That's right, ultra good. Because we created so many hundreds of millions of mutations, we basically sped up evolution. And so we have these great antibodies. Right now we're sending them out to the US military, uh, to a COVID supported, a Gates Foundation supported consortium, to a laboratory in China and a laboratory in the UK, and they're all, testing their potency and also testing that they protect hamsters. So you give uh, antibody to hamsters and you expose them to, to COV2 and see if they get sick or not. So what we're waiting for is, is happy hamsters. Right, and is there any chance that these would be used now on a compassionate basis? If somebody, if there's no other option, would they use these on humans yet? These antibodies are gonna be very potent, but we still need to run safety and talks this is a 10 week process that happens at Charles River Laboratories and it's important to make sure the medicine is safe to give to humans. And then we need to do a phase trial uh, and that's gonna happen in August. And so in a phase trial, we give the medicine to about 250 people who just came into a hospital and we, we wanna say, A, does it, is it safe? And B, is it effective? Is it actually helping people not, not die and not get as sick and be able to go home faster? And then it's after that point where we could start doing the large scale release and that's that's, September. That's way faster than a vaccine, but I know that is frustratingly slow still, and we're doing everything we can to try to see if we can move it earlier, but at this point, I, I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. Right, and once that's all cleared, how long will it take to scale this up to millions and so get it out? This whole process for us has been an active creativity of how we can track what normally is a multi-year process, and we're setting it up so that we're able to complete phase one slash two, which is a fast study in August, and what what I am trying to do very aggressively is lobby uh, national governments in multiple places around the world that have biovats that they should give grants to scale this stuff in, up in anticipation that we are successful. Because imagine each country spends $20 million building up hundreds of thousands or millions of doses. Um, if they're wrong, it's a drop in the bucket if, compared to the global cost of the economy that we're just venting out of the global economy and our lives. Whereas if they're right, then that medicine would be immediately available to hand out. So what I, would, what I don't want to do is be stuck like we were in the Ebola crisis where people came up with ZMAP antibodies and then they ran out and there was like four months where there was no medicine. So that's, that's a problem we're trying to solve now.